You know, the last 18 months has been rough for a lot of us. The first Sunday in November for Methodists across the world and for other denominations is termed All Saints Day, a day to come together to, to acknowledge and remember those who have gone to glory, those who transitioned from this world to life eternal. And it's usually just for those who have transitioned in the last 12 months. But March of 2020, COVID hit. And since that time, we have not been able to celebrate. We have not been able to recognize. We've not been able to have a good homegoing service. So we decided to bring everyone in who lost a loved one since March of 2020. You see, some of us had small services in funeral homes. Others did graveside services. You know, I actually did my father's eulogy from my bedroom because my whole family had COVID. So we didn't have any kind of gathering at all. So we wanted to gather today to celebrate God and to remember those who've gone on before. Dying Christ toward our death. 
rising Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As our loved ones in baptism put on Christ, so in Christ they are now clothed in glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we will be has not yet been revealed. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. But we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and dies shall never, and those who live and believe in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I die, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Yeah. Friends, we've gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith. As we celebrate the lives of our loved ones, we come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, the resurrection. We definitely want to greet those who are online viewing with us and those who are here worshiping with us. Because this is a special service, we open up our sanctuary for the first time in 20 months because we feel it's just that important. But just to the families of those who bought love. Now, if you're watching online and you say, well, this is just going to be a standard eulogy. No, this is going to be a sermon that will be important for your life to understand who you are in Christ. So I want you to continue to worship with us as we celebrate life. At this time, we're going to have a, a song by recording artist, Juanita Craft.
this time we're going to have scripture readings by Carmen Camp. And we'll also have scripture. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff may comfort me. Thou preparest to take for me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Our New Testament reading is taken from 14th chapter of John, verses 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, are many matches. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That were I, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way he know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto me, the Father, but by me. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Lord, at this point, first, my renewed God of this church is friends. I'm so glad to be in the service one more time. <laughs> service one more time. It's prayer time here. At this point, first Mount Lou, United Methodist Church, and to our listeners, virtual listeners, the Bible teaches us that we shall always pray. We shall pray in season and we shall pray out of season which you have never ceased to pray. And then I'm reminded my brothers and sisters that if we are called by the name of Jesus, we must pray and seek his face and turn from our wicked ways. Then the word said that God will open the heavens and heal our land. Let us bow our heads in a moment of silence, in meditation, and then we shall commence to pray. Let us pray. Almighty
Almighty God, we thank you for this, another day that you have made and created just for us. We pray, God, that you would instill and awaken within us a spirit that would cause us to rejoice and be glad in this day. If God, by chance, we come up against any obstacles, let us have the blessed assurance that all things work together for the good of those that love us. And God, as we gather here this morning in this special month and occasion, we come in remembrance of all of the saints that have left the legacy that have shown us how to worship and serve you in a manner that's pleasing unto thee. So therefore, God, this morning we give you thanks to all the saints who have worshipped you, whether in brush arbors or cathedrals, we give you thanks. We give you thanks, God, for those saints that whether good in churches or prominent seeking meeting houses where their names were lifted and adored. We come this morning, God, giving you thanks. We give you thanks, O oh God, for hands lifted and prayed as we lift them today and as the saints that have gone before us taught us the significance of lifting hands, whether their hands were manicured hands or standing three souls. Whether they were strong hands and those long with age, we thank you, God, for allowing them to give us an example to lift holy hands, to give you praise and honor and offerings all across the land. We thank you, God, for hard working saints, whether hard or had it a steel unit, head black or God of all, blue collar, three piece suit. They left their mark on the earth for us while children to come. And let us be mindful, God, of the significance of how they taught us and continue to teach us how to live and more or less, God, how to die. We thank God for the tremendous sacrifice made by those who have gone before us. We ask you in the blessed name of Jesus that you will bless the memories of your saints. We ask God that they learn how to walk wisely from their examples of faith and dedication, worship and love. And as we continue to worship today, we pray God that you stir your Holy Spirit in the man of God that will come and bring bread to us. We ask God that you search his heart and find the meditation of his heart pleasing unto thee, and let him speak the words that all of us are in need of hearing today. And it is my prayer, God, that your Holy Spirit will anoint our ears so that we may hear what the Spirit of the living God will say to us today, so that we may continue the legacy, and so that we may teach his hand and constantly and consistently prepare ourselves to meet you one day face to face. This is our prayer, and it is in Jesus' name to believe by faith that it is heard in thy kingdom. And every person that loves the Lord shout it, Amen.
and night mean life and death. You see, once God put Adam on this planet, we knew something was going to go wrong. Whenever humans get involved, something's going to go wrong. Because of our ego, because we wanted that our way. God had a plan. He had a plan all the way so we could bring it together one more time. Paul wrote about this in his first letter that he wrote to the church at Thessalonica. In the first Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verses 13 and 18, Paul writes these words. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. But since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. But this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, we who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means receive those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the angels call, and the sound of God's trumpet will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, we who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the end. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, Encourage one another. Amen. These words. This is the word of God. Bless the people of God. Thanks be to God. With the scripture at the forefront of consciousness, think a while with me on the topic until we meet again. Until we meet again. Won't you pray with me? Lord, I come to you because you are what we need. You are the answer for everything that is. You are the answer for every question and for everything. So Lord, we need you now. Open our ears. Open our minds. Open our hearts and our souls so we might be able to be for Now minimize your preaching and maximize your spirit the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts may be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our need. The children of God said, Amen. Amen. amen, amen, and amen. amen. Until we meet again. Most scholars think that this letter to the church of Thessalonica was Paul's first letter that he had. Before Romans, before Corinthians, before the letters to Timothy, this was the first one. And he had a particular purpose for writing, especially this part. You see, they thought that Jesus was going to come back before they died. Now, 2,000 years later, we are still waiting for Jesus to come. So Paul wrote to give them hope to have strength in time. We see this in verse 13. He says, But we do not want you to be uninformed about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. He doesn't want you to grieve as if you don't have hope, which means it's all right to grieve, just don't grieve as if there's no hope. We need to grieve as though we have hope. And that hope comes in the very next verse. He says, for well, since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, God will bring with him those who have died. He will bring with him those who have died until we meet again. Now you see, they had limited knowledge of Jesus. And because they were uh, not Jews, they had limited knowledge of the Hebrew scriptures. So all they had was the letters of Paul and the teachings of Paul. But we have a big advantage. But we know the whole story as well. We can go all the way back to Genesis. And we can go all the way to Revelations. 
We know the story of God, but most of all, we know the story of Jesus, the Jesus story. You see, Adam came and he was a small man, the first man, and he created sin because he and his wife he ate of the forbidden fruit. And because of that, they were spiritually dead in that point forward. God says, if you eat of the fruit, you will die. It wasn't a physical death because we know they lived and lived and lived for quite a while. But it was a spiritual death, and all who were born to sin were born spiritually dead. But Jesus, born of the Spirit, came and was spiritually alive. And so Jesus came to provide us a way home to give us back our spirit. We see it first when Jesus is on the cross, hanging behind the queen, two criminals. One mocks Jesus, but the other says, Lord, remember me when you come into the kingdom. And Jesus turned to him and says, Today you will be with me in paradise. Not next month, not next year, but today you will be with me in paradise. And so my understanding is that the first one who got the paradise was Jesus. Today. So I believe that if you know Jesus, at the end of your days, you will hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Well done, not because you are first. Well done, not because you lived the sinless life. Well done, because not because your life didn't have problems with chaos. But it was well done because the promises of God are perfect. Let me say that again. The promises of God are perfect. Jesus tells us in John 3, 16, but God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The promise of God are perfect. See, Jesus lived a perfect life and he died a perfect death. We know about the perfect life. He lived a sinless, he didn't do anything against the law. Every law he kept perfect, the first one and the end one. What do you mean by a perfect death? You see, God requires a sacrifice for sin. And they would sacrifice sheep and lambs and goats and bulls and, and oxen. But they all had to be perfect. That's right. Without a blemish. Can't be bringing those stinking sheep and offering to God and think God was going to forgive you. You had to bring your best. That's right. So Jesus being both God. And man, fully God and fully man, was the only person who kept the law perfectly, and he was the only person that could bear all of our sins, all of the sins of the world. And because of that, he died the perfect death. We find in Second Corinthians, the, the fifth chapter, verse 21, it says, For our sake, he, God, made him, Jesus, to be sin who knew no sin. So that in him, Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. God took the sins of humanity, put them in Jesus, put them on the cross, so that that sacrifice could be made your sins, for my sins, and the sins of the world, for whomsoever believes. The question is, do you believe this? Or is it just words that, that, that sound good that you hear when you come to church, but do you believe it? Second Corinthians 5 and 4, 17 says, so if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. 
But what has become new is that your sin has been forgiven. And that's what makes you new. Your sins have been forgiven. Are you forgiven? See, our lives will never be perfect. We will never be blameless. We will never be faultless. We will never be sinless. Everything will go out of the way. Before Jesus left in John 16, 33, he said, in this world you will have persecution. In this world you will have trouble. In this world you will have chaos. But before I overcome the world. You see, that's why I like that 23rd Psalm. David understood who was in charge. He says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Not because I've been good. Why? Not because I've done everything right. Why? Not because uh, my life has been perfect. Why? Because God was with me. See, I love ones walk through that valley. They walk through that valley of the shadow of death, and God was with them the entire way. Until they got to the other side, the glory of God. The promises of God are perfect. 2 Corinthians 5 and 8 says, To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's right. This is the way I see it in my mind's eye. The Holy Spirit, who is God's conduit to us, is today God. The Holy Spirit was visiting the loved ones, whatever they are, whatever they be, their last time. They came and they saw where they were, and they came back and gave a report for the fault. He or she has completed their task. Or maybe he would say, there's a leak in that old building and that song has got to move. It doesn't matter where you were, if you were in a car, an automobile accident, if you were in your bed sleep, if you were in a hospital bed and didn't wake up, if you were in a nursing home and you went to sleep and didn't get back up, it doesn't matter where you are. The Holy Spirit is there. And after receiving the report from the Holy Spirit, God turned to the Son. Says Jesus is the eventual man. You know, I like the King James better because it says mansion. I'm going to say room or dwelling place. I don't want a room or dwelling place when I get to heaven. I don't want to be a mansion. I don't know about you. But Jesus promised me a mansion and I'm going to be one. Jesus says, yes, I just finished polishing the chandelier. I just put the last open door up. That his house is ready. Built not by hands of man, eternal in heaven, but built by the master comforts of his seat. Jesus said, if I go to the past place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, for the way I am, you may be also. So people tell you, well, the angels came and took my love on the way. No. By the name of Jesus. Jesus himself said, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Jesus said, it came down to your loved one wherever they were, and when they got in that presence of God, in the presence of Jesus, that body could no longer hold that spirit. And that spirit now came out and jumped into Jesus' arms. And Jesus said, Well done, thy good and faithful servant, enter into your house. And now they're in a place where there is no more pain, where there is no more crime, where there is no more death, where there is no more disease, where there is no COVID, where there is no HIV, where there is no physical where there is no back pain, where there are no more bad deeds. It's in a place where everything So don't believe as those who have no hope. And I'm talking to myself. Because see, my, my, my father died in February. He hadn't been ill, not terminally ill. He went to the hospital for a routine procedure, an elective procedure, and he didn't wake up the next morning. 
And I want to blame God and say, God, how could you take it now? He still had more time on the clock, but God, then God spoke to me and said, should you not have the good and the bad? Job put it this way, the Lord gave it. The Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So if your loved one knew Christ, and you know Christ, it's not goodbye. It's I'll see you later until we meet again. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. Because there might be someone here or someone online who does not know Jesus, who has not accepted his perfect gift of love. We want to offer you Christ today. You don't have to do anything. It's a free gift. Jesus has paid the price for you. For your sins. Yeah, I would love to have my dad back right now. I know where he is. And I know where I'm going. Do you know where you're going? If you don't, just say the simple prayer with me. I'm a sinner. And I can't do it on my own. I accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. I repent of my sins. It's just that simple. When you say that prayer, we believe that you were born again, that you're in a right relationship with God, and that you too will go home one day. If you're online, it's your first time making that offer. We ask that you send me an email to pastor at EPFMUMC.org. Pastor at EPFMUMC. Here now, this method from Reverend Billy Benson. <laughs>
Unfortunately, due to COVID, we've had to remove all the hymns. So you can go along with the parts that you know, but otherwise you can just listen as Reverend Kemp is going to help me by reading the returns. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who innocently repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We, we have failed to be an obedient church. We, we have not done your will. We, we have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We, we have not loved our neighbors. We have we not have heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Take this moment to offer your solid prayer to God. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus the Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hand. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night of the day, he took up to us. He took the bread. <laughs> gave thanks. Broke it. And gave it to his disciples and says, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given to you. The supper was over, he took the cup. Gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and says, drink from this all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, shared for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you shall in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of each of life after Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, 
now and forever. Let us all say, Amen. And now, let us pray with confidence the prayer talked to us by our Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, now it be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. No fear, you should have been handed the communion packets when you came in. The body of Christ, given for you. Take, eat, feast on them in your hearts with thanksgiving. The blood of our Savior, shed for your sins and the sins of the world. Drink knowing that you are forgiven. And may the peace of God remain with you always. At this time, we're going to have our announcements from Carmen Kim. Our announcements for the morning. Let's not forget our veterans on November 11th. It's Veterans Day. That's a time for us to pay our respect to those who have served. For one day, we stand united in respect for you, our veterans. We celebrate and we honor you for your patriotism love the country and your willingness to serve and sacrifice for the common good. Let's not forget our veterans. Our church anniversary is next Sunday. Praise in the parking lot. Praying at the Weber State night so we can have a great time in the parking lot. As we honor our past, celebrate our present, and embrace our future. That is our theme. Honoring our past, celebrating our present, and embracing our future. If you're looking for spiritual enrichment, we have Bible study on Wednesday afternoon. Wednesday at 6 30, the pastor is doing a money management title Saving Grace. And on Friday, there's a Zoom Bible study for children at 5 30. Our Tuesday Bible study will be doing in February. Now today at 12.30, uh, you can tune in to our Make It Plan where we discuss uh, the sermon and what took place in service today. Also, uh, let's remember to pray for our sick and our children. Why here? The question is that's all the time. And usually the answer is because God requires it. We do it out of obedience to God. And we are all committed to the Son. The more you give, the more He gives to you. You can't be God's gift no matter how hard you try. But I want to give you another reason to give that I thought was quite interesting. Studies have shown that giving to help others, which is what we do when we give to the church. It improves your happiness and well-being. What about that? Giving improves your happiness. God is always looking out for us, y'all. So when we ask for that additional $190 for the next service, in addition to your regular times and offers, Remember, it's going to improve your happiness and well-being. There are six ways to give here at East 
Yeah. <laughs> 